Gang, that State Trashy Tour is in high gear. Mm-hmm. Talking overtime. Oh, baby. Yeah. Do yourself a favor. Grab the squad. Come out and see the boys. Kippy and I co-headline doing a little stand-up comedy. Then we play a little Are You Garbage with the crowd. It's a fun, fun time. Yeah, next stop are Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Buffalo, New York. And then we added a third show in Toronto. Get those tickets. And we're going to Pontiac, Michigan. Fourth show added in Chicago. Yeah. Shout out to it. Then Minneapolis, Madison, Milwaukee, Sacramento. Second show added there. San Francisco, San Jose, Washington, D.C. Date rescheduled. Mm-hmm. And then Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Added a second show with the Fillmore. Get those tickets, gang. We love yous. Welcome to another exciting edition of Are You Garbage? The show where you find out if your favorite comedians are classy individuals or absolute trash. Now, here are your hosts, Kevin Ryan and H. Foley. Hey, everybody out there, and welcome back to everybody's new favorite podcast. This is Are You Garbage? Oh, yeah. It's that little show we sit down with your favorite comedians, and we find out if they grew up to be classy yeah. or if they're just a big old piece of trash. Trash, trash, trash. I'm your host, Dave Trolley, coming at you on a beautiful day. We're out back here at Tootie's in the new edition. She's upstairs making a pot of her famous five-alarm chili, baby. Okay. Make your mouth whistle, make your butthole scream. All right. Okay. <laughs> Going <laughs> dirty <laughs> early, I see. <laughs> My co-host is coming at you from right next to me, son of a bitch, <laughs> Stabbing me in the back. He's the CEO of Are You Garbage? He's an international businessman, and he's my best pal in the whole wide world. Oh. Give it up for KJ, Kevin James Ryan, everybody. What up, gang? Thanks for tuning in. As always, please make sure you rate, view, subscribe on iTunes. Full video available on YouTube. As you know, those numbers are... True to roof. Fucking cooking, baby. Cookin'. Uh, then what else did I want to say? Patreon.com slash Are You Garbage, gang. Man. Check it the fuck out. It's awesome. Yes, it is. And how about a nice quick shout out to our producer extraordinaire, the magic man, makes us all look good, works the ones, the twos, threes, and the fours. He crosses the T's and he dots the I's. Give it up for T-Bone McScruffins. Toby McMullen, everybody. What up, boys? What up, T-Bone? Man, we got a powerhouse in here, dude. Yeah. I'd love to see this guy down in Texas trying to get his hands on some gabagool. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Gang, the long hair ain't lying because we couldn't be more excited mm-hmm. to have our incredibly, and I mean incredibly special guest here with us today for the first time. He is a very talented actor and podcaster, and you might have seen him in, but not limited to. You got Tadpole, Daredevil, Law and Order SVU, The Dead Zone, Jimmy Kimmel Live, Late Show with David Letterman, The View, 2010 World Series of Poker, Ooh. The Howard Stern Show, Entertainment Tonight, Talking Sopranos, Where My Mom's At, Your Mom's House, and of course, he was one of the stars of 76 episodes of one of the most groundbreaking Achy. Emmy Award winning television shows of all time. And he's got a brand new podcast over there at YMH Studios with his co host, Jamie Lynn Sigler. Not today, pal. Give it up for Robert Eiler, everybody. Hey. Let's go. Wow. Let's go. I've never heard my full credits. <laughs> <laughs> I really haven't. I've you got, got a tad, Law and Order in there, tadpole. too. Tadpole. Yeah. Law and Order, I, you know, I got my brother calling me like, you know, once a year, and he's like, I just saw your Law and Order. <laughs> I'm like, Tadpole, man, nobody. I think I've had one person in my life bring up Tadpole. That's a great me. movie. Yeah, yeah, wow. I don't, I don't, I haven't seen it. Yeah, it's good stuff, man. Buddy. Thank you for coming in and sitting down yeah, with us. Yeah, man, thanks this for, is awesome. Thanks for having me. We're this excited. Is, uh, give us the uh, give us the backstory. Give us the origin story. New York kid. I grew up in New York City my whole life. Uh, there were a lot of us in what they called a one bedroom apartment, which wasn't because there was no door. It okay. was, uh, you know, like a studio type thing. Yeah, it was like a studio, but it kind it had like another room, like mm-hmm. a bedroom. Sure, but it was not. There were uh, there were cockroaches in the bread. You know, Jesus. we had really, yeah, what yeah, man. What neighborhood was this? Uh, so it was eighty third between first and second, and the only reason why we lived there is because my grandfather was the super. Okay. Uh, yeah. So I lived, I lived on eighty first and first for a while. Really? Right near Gracie Muse uh, Diner. Come on, man. Buddy. Yeah. Of course. Love great it. burgers. Woo! Yeah. Yeah. Gracie Muse. We used to call it the Spiz. <laughs> like, you know, meet me at the Spiz. They would let us smoke. They had the little ashtrays. Yeah. Back and they in would the day. let us fucking smoke. Not even back in the day. Like well, back in the day, but like not a not long when you were time allowed to ago. Smoke. Like yeah, yeah, there yeah. would be like seven a.m. We'd be smoking in there because it would, like you know. If, when we were underage, there were no like after hours. Sometimes yeah. I would let us in, and we would just go there and order like a cheeseburger and a beer, and just then like you know thirty seven more beers, and just like leave the burger on the table, just be fucking drinking all night. Dude, one smoking. underrated thing about New York diners is they serve booze. That's great, and Crazy. it's fucking always it awesome. The you best. always forget, and then you're there, you're like, I'll do a beer, and then yeah, they're like, yeah. cut to, it, and they like they never take them off the table, so it's like there's always just like thirty eight empty beer bottles, on and the, the table. craziest 100%. selection of liquor. They got peach schnapps and shit like yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> 
wild. I feel like they all just bring it in from their house every day. Like, what do you got? I got three Sam Adams. You know your drink, you got a drinking problem, which I've done a bunch, when you drink them out of a beer. They're like, oh, we're out of Budweiser's. Does this work? You're like, just fucking bring it in. They're like, you want the one that's been on display for a year and a half on the counter here? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, You know, I'd love to ask your guys' opinions about this. We busted my friend's balls for like five years because, so you know when they give the mozzarella sticks and the lettuce is on the bottom? Hate it. The worst. So we all, you know, everybody's eating and whatever, and he he takes the fucking lettuce, rolls it up, and then takes the marinara sauce, dips it out, and eats it. Ugh. One of the grossest moves I've ever That's seen to this day. Dude. Fucking nuts. And by the way, we like if you're fucking sixty or fifty, it's like one thing. We were like sixteen years old. Yeah, you can't be we're doing like, bro. That. Get another or like, I know. They, yeah, they have three fifty, man. Yeah, the menu is seventeen pages. <laughs> Stop eating marinara lettuce. That's a gaunt. Go- that's like <laughs> yeah. I, it's that's like even, eating the parsley. Yeah, yeah. The I mean, fuck? that's crazy. never crossed my mind to even do that. It was he was like in his glory just doing it and there were eight dudes just like <laughs> Dude, that's nasty. Oh, holy shit yeah that ain't great holy shit all right upper east side mm-hmm. your upper east side what's your mom and dad that's doing? what we did yeah so my mom uh ended up eventually working for uh transit okay. and then my dad worked at queen center mall okay Damn, yeah, you yeah, yeah yeah fucking new york kid yeah, and how many as how many of them were you yeah, so my mom and dad, this is really New York. So my mom and dad were like 17 or 18 when they had me. They okay. weren't even like, they were like barely dating. Mm-hmm. They were, they were, they tried to make it work for a little bit. And then uh, my dad went off and he had four kids. And then my mom went off and had one more, went right when I moved out of the house at 18. Okay. She had Damn. one more. Damn. Yeah, yeah. Pretty, pretty wild. Yeah. Yikes. So you had so what well, that age gap is an eighteen year difference between you and your youngest sibling. Yeah, and then the other ones are like almost the same. There's a there's a set Damn. of twins that are also like that same age, uh-huh. and then my other but but I was yeah I was I was the only one for like nine years or something in the in the Ooh. studio apartment. You and your parents. Well, no, my it was my grandparents' place oh, that shit. we lived at. Yeah, so like my fucking great grandma who apparently had her own place, but would just like lived on the chair. Like she just <laughs> said smoke it. She Christ. smoked. Uh, Bad. So my grandparents smoked Cools, and then she smoked Paul Malls, and uh, never inhaled. And everybody in the family would be like, "Whoa!" I know what that is. There's a missing. No, you know oh. what that is. That's a test of the emergency broadcast system on the phone that they were doing. Oh wow! Hey, shit goes down. Is that everybody's phones going off? Yeah, yeah. Emergency... Probably heard about the lettuce at the time. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the emergency system is functioning. Uh... You got a dirt bag on the Upper East Side eating orange slices <laughs> and parsley. <laughs> so your great, so your grandparents are in the house. Grandparent, it was their place, and then my my mom, and then like my two uncles would be in and out. Like it was crazy, Damn. man. It was like a, and we the craziest part of the whole thing is so. The bathroom was the size of like a locker. Like okay. it was so tiny and it was just a toilet and then the shower was in the kitchen. I've seen that. Get the fuck out of here. Dude, we were yeah, was this it in was the 30s? Yeah, it might as well. It was fucking I pictured, we like, were that scene from Willy Wonka where they're all laying in bed together. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what yeah, I slept on the I slept on the couch in the living room with my grandma and my grandpa. It was just like that. What? Holy shit. Yeah, yeah, and you would hear and it was so terrifying cuz at night all you would hear was like and you just hear mice fucking running back and forth on the thing and then you'd hear one get caught on the traps dude it and was that was breakfast <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> holy shit God, and then you started yeah. working very young yeah so at like six years old uh i was walking down the street with my dad who you know my dad was like a bigger dude like you know at the time probably benching like 315 he yeah. rides a harley and like some gay it's trashy dude. to quote what your dad was benching <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was doing he could get 350 one time he wasn't doing right well that's all i know about him you know i just <laughs> but he yeah he, uh, he uh the reason i say it is because he that a gay dude approached us which in 1990s different than you know 2020 sure. or 23 whatever and uh and was like hey your son is should be an actor you know, and oh, my dad's shit. like, what? that sounds like, like a couple of bucks in my <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what happened. So my, so he gives, and my, and my dad's like, what, buddy? Like what? And he's like, no, no, no. I'm, I'm, an, I'm a manager. I manage, uh, you know, commercial talent and actors, whatever. And he gives my dad a card, and my dad's like, what the fuck? And he brought the card back to 
my mom, my mom's like, yeah, of course. Like, I knew it. You know? Like, <laughs> I've been be, saying he's the cutest baby yeah. in the heat. That's when everybody in the apartment started dancing and singing around, you know? I got a golden ticket. It's a golden ticket, baby. And so they start throwing me on. No more mice for us. They start throwing me on auditions, and, like, pretty pretty quick, I got, like, Pizza Hut was my first one. Then I got IBM, AT&T, and, like, things started rolling. Damn. National spots? Yeah, yeah. Woo! Yeah, yeah, yeah. So a couple of bucks started rolling in. Yeah, a couple of bucks, but uh, it, it's like, it's, this sounds like a douchey thing to say, but like I don't even remember the amount of money because then eventually Sopranos sure. hit. And you're, sure. And you're like, oh yeah, that you know that was like gas money compared <laughs> yeah. to fucking, you know, we're like, holy shit. I just you a big shit, one, like, like, dad, what do you need? <laughs> Thank yeah. you, get out yeah. of here. But my parents were really great with that stuff, like of not, you know, but I think they had passed that law by then where like you couldn't right. take the kids' money. Gotcha. Or you could take up to like 15% or whatever, but um. So I, I honestly don't know. So that money just goes into any acting money you make goes into an account in your name. Yeah, I don't know the rules. It's called like the Coogan Law. So I think the parents can take like whatever, 15 or 20 percent. And then I think they could also take an additional if they want to say that they're the manager. Gotcha. But I, so what the end of that story is that guy who was my mat who gave the card is still my manager today. No That's shit. Awesome. 32 years later. Great. That's crazy. Unbelievable. I texted him on the way here. I'm like, yo, Best Buy's trying to charge me $200 for something. Like, help <laughs> me out. Because that, that's what he, like, he literally is like, he's the, because I didn't work for 15 years. And he's like, yo, you keep, like, you know, you, you still got checks coming in. Like, what can I do for you? You know, and sometimes I'll just hit him like, yo, Best Buy's trying to charge me 200 bucks. I don't know what to do with this. Hey, what's he going to do? What are you going to do for you at Best Buy? Call he's, him up. He, rattle the cages he, a little bit. He's the best. <laughs> he's he's a gay Jewish guy. And he'll just tell him like, hey, they're being fucking prejudiced if, if they don't cancel. <laughs> the thing. Like he he gets anything done. He's like a fixer. Oh, <laughs> I love he's, that. Um, and my, all of every actor I've ever met is like, I can't get my manager on the phone. They're sure. like, and I'm like, well, it's different because I never at like, you know, people ask their managers for work and this and when Sopranos ended, I told my manager, Don't call me. I'm done. Like I'm not I'm not doing and I fucking you know, I'm jammed up at a Walmart. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Until this, Apple Care's calling, you know. This Coles is trying to screw me. <laughs> yeah. Holy shit. That's okay. crazy. Damn. Were you going to so when how old were you when when you got the show? I was 12 years old. And were you going to were you going to public school on the Upper East Side then? I went to public school my whole life, Upper East Side, yeah. Do you, did you go to school straight through the whole time you were doing the show? No, so it was probably around like 7th grade, 8th grade, I was becoming like a bit of a distraction where like I would show up twice a week and kind of be, you know, just not know what was going yeah. on. And it just became like a bit of a thing. And then uh, eventually, that had to be kind of awesome, a little bit. Oh, dude, I used to show up. <laughs> I used to Man, show up. Awesome. I used so they used to let us. I went to Wagner on seventy six and second. They used to let us out for lunch, so I would show up at lunch at like eleven thirty, whatever. Meet everybody by the fucking mailbox. We'd go out. We'd hang out. Maybe you smoke a blunt. You start drinking, and then it's like, do I want to go back in school or not? Uh, see, you know, c can I get some people to hang with me? Yeah. No. All right, let's go back to school. And then like, I just did it. They would sit me down for a test, and I'd be like, I can't take that. I don't know anything that's on here. You You're know at what a I back mean? table in Tony D. Dinopolis. Yeah. Oh, dude, Tony. D. I used to crush Woo! Tony. I had, I had my fucking. Tony D's is all right. I had my 18th birthday at Tony Dinopolis downstairs. Family style. Hell yeah. Fucking love that place. Yeah, yeah. That was Tony the first Dinopoli's time I read Penny All of Vodka. I fucking blew my mind. Really? Oh, which loved by it. the way, you guys should be ashamed of yourselves for trying to make him feel bad about ordering a pizza for dinner. What the fuck? That's oh, the dude. Yes. That's the biggest scum. What, what oh, is this? Are I you fucking... garbage or are you the royal family? Yes. You I can't fucking order a fucking pizza for dinner? It's off-putting. What? He You're doesn't not, share it. It's uncouth. Yeah, like all of a sudden we're gentlemen now. I don't we even know. We have a show about being dirtbags, and it's on the fucking menu. You ordered a Who hasn't had a pizza for dinner? Right? Not as an entree. At a sit-down? And I'm a fat pig. Yeah. I, wow, that's... I, it's I'm, crazy. They don't budge on it. It's that's insane. crazy. I see it constantly. All right, well, we're cutting this. <laughs> hey, right now. That question if off. you haven't ordered a pizza for dinner, there's something wrong with you. I used to order this place from Delizia's on 92nd and 2nd. I used to order the same thing every single day. I'd get a large pie, half pepperoni, penne alla vodka, and then I'd get either chicken franchise or uh, chicken marsala, and then a salad, extra order of garlic knots, butter. I would eat that, and then I wouldn't eat for like 36 hours. Man, Damn. that's all right. I yeah. love a chicken franchise. That shit's oh, the, the one up there is so good, man. It's so 
fucking good. And then like, because I used to be on such a crazy like partying schedule once Sopranos ended that it became like I was living on a not 24 hour clock. Like I was living on like a 48 hour clock sure. because I would just do fucking coke and stay up all night and whatever. So I would just eat once and then consume just fucking drugs and alcohol until then I woke up again feeling like shit. And I was like, all right, time to order Replenish. the meal. Yeah, yeah, load yeah, it up. yeah. Oh, hey, get some my, carbs in you, baby. You're speaking my language. <laughs> yeah. Oh, such good times. So you stayed in school the whole time. Kind of. Uh, kind of. And then somewhere around like eighth grade, they were like, okay, we'll pay for a tutor for you full time. So but we're then, cooking now. The show's cooking. Oh, yeah. The yeah. show. Yeah. We're, yeah. There's like, uh, they say, we'll pay for a tutor for you the whole time. But then like, I'd be on set. And everybody else would get 10 minutes to chill, and they'd be like, hey, come read two pages of this. I was like, get the fuck yeah, out of here. Like, the I'm not the, and the kind of like, you know, guys like Tony Sirico were like, get out of here. He's not reading pages. Sure. Like, you know, like they had my like back. Actual mob guys. Yeah, yeah, like I'm like, I'm standing outside a set smoking, you know, and they're like, yeah, come read this. I'm like, get the fuck out of here. I got five minutes of smoke. The Playing old, dominoes and shit. Yeah, yeah. The old man in the sea. Get the fuck uh, out of yeah. here. All right. What was the, what was, so you stayed in, were you in that apartment that whole time too? No. That? So, uh, so my, my grandmother passed, we moved out into a studio on 92nd and 2nd. So my mom got approved for like an income housing okay. uh, gotcha. spot. So we go 92nd and 2nd, even though I think, at, I don't know if at the time she was working, but we were paying like nothing, you know, mm. but she still, she moved a friend in and she had a roommate in a studio apartment. Jeez. It was like this fucking box. I remember her friend. Just had like clothes in the corner and we're like, dude, it was fucking. I look and back you're now, living I'm like, that's there. Crazy. Why the shows go? The shows. Popular? No, no, no. So that's that's all pre-show. Once, yeah, somewhere around like ten or eleven, we got. A, I don't know what age, but we got approved for a two bedroom because I'm a. Uh, I was a boy. She's a a woman, and when you have a a woman who has a son, you get moved that's up for the first two bedroom. Man, the Islers are working the system. Oh, I mean, this is, dude, <laughs> you are the most. This is Holy. the most New York shit. Yeah, ever. yeah, yeah. We're You're scamming we're, the lottery. We're, we're, system. S- we're selling our food stamps eighty cents on the dollar. <laughs> we're fucking, dude. We're making moves out here. Yeah. Holy shit, dude. We're crushing it. And uh, so, so then we had a two bedroom, and it was like, oh, it went from like living in these horrible places or to all of a sudden now I was like, I have my own room. Crazy. Like this is crazy. And then when I most was, people who are thirty eight don't have their own room <laughs> yeah. in New York. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So my uncle, uh, who was a you know drug addict, I don't know you know the whole technical thing of like you so you always were a drug addict, but you know he cleaned himself up. He's doing great now. But he would steal shit from me. So somewhere around ten or eleven, I told my mom like I need a lock for my door. So eventually, she got me a lock for my door with a key because he kept ta- like I would come home and be like, where are my video games? And it would just be <laughs> fucking gone. So I got a lock for my fucking door, and that's when like it. That's when I became like a different person. Can't like, tell you shit. You sure. lock your door with a key. Yeah, and then Ooh. I got Sopranos, and it was like this guy's unstoppable. <laughs> he's got a lock to his room, and he's on a fucking hit show. And that was it. It changed real. Like two years, everything changed. Yeah. You get an outside door put on your bedroom door. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's got the hammer. So on he it. could get stuck in between the two when he tries to steal something. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Kip, this is Trust and Will. Shout out to Trust and Will. I trust them and I will them. Let's be honest. We all got stuff that we don't want to do. We don't want to take out the trash. We don't want to clean the litter box. Mm -hmm. But taking care of your estate is something you don't want to put off. Trust and Will can help you with the last one. Easy peasy. They're simplified the process from finding out what's right for your family to finalizing documents and notary. Yeah. I uh, I recently did it. I got my affairs in order to sell. Did you? I did. Whoa. And you know what? What are you leaving me? New guy Luke gets my collection of flatbreads. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no matter what you're planning for, Trust and Will always has your back with bank level encryption. There you go. It's not out there on the street all willy nilly. Your Mm-mm. info will be kept secure, and they have live customer support to help you whenever you need it. Step into a new season knowing that you're prepared. Put all that anxiety, all the thought and negative thoughts behind you. Hundreds of thousands of families have used Trust and Will to plan their estates and their five-star rating on Trustpilot, uh, and they're ready to help you. Gain peace of mind today with Trust and Will. Get 10% off and free shipping of your estate plan documents by visiting trustandwill.com slash garbage. That's 10% off and free shipping at trustandwill.com slash garbage. Do it, gang. Do it. This episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. Oh, better help them. Calling all weirdos and psychos. <laughs> Present and accounted for. Who's losing it? Huh? Who's I'm not. Everybody it? shut up. Gang, sometimes we all need to talk things out, and talk therapy is something that can definitely help you, and there's no better place to do that than BetterHelp. Therapy can help you figure out what's holding you back so you can stop worrying and move forward. Mm-hmm. I've been telling some of my co-hosts 
big <laughs> man over here. Johnny um, Screwballs. BetterHelp is online therapy, and it's incredible. Uh, you can talk to a licensed therapist through video chat, by phone, or even by messaging. It's easy peasy. You can do it at your will. Getting the help you need has never been easier. I'm if, using it. If you're out there and you're struggling with, you know, uh, work, life, loss of a family, anything. Shoot him a text. Hit him on the phone. Talk therapy. Video. Is, talk therapy is a great tool. If you've used it in the past, you know uh, it's tough to get into. It's tough to jump into. It's You feel sucks. vulnerable. It sucks. But with them, you just take a quiz. You get matched to a licensed therapist. And if you ever need to switch therapist, bada bing, bada boom, you can change it anytime. No additional charge. No questions asked. They ain't all, up, they ain't all up in your biz. Uh, make your brain your friend with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash garbage a day to get 10% off your first uh, month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash garbage. BetterHelp.com slash garbage. Do it. Okay, now back to the show. Let's go. Holy shit. Damn. Okay. And was there any crazy purchases on your end when the show really started, when the checks really started coming in as a teenager? No, and still to this day, no. I've never owned anything. Jet I've never skis. had a car. I've never had. Oh, no shit. I've never had. Yeah, I'm just like a New York City rent my apartment anywhere I go. Do like, you have a license? Uh, I did. I don't think I don't think I renewed it. I think it like expired or whatever. But uh, I think like if a goddamn Statue of Liberty over here. This if, fucking kid. If, if I had to uh say what my craziest purchase would be it would be i put myself into the world series of poker when you read the world i was in the yeah. world series of poker but i was playing poker main like main event main event and i, I so it was 10 grand to <laughs> get in ten, I, 10 g odds 10 grand to get in i won over 40 in it yeah so yeah. let's go so it was a fucking Kid made the money yeah, all right it was, it was a good it was a good investment but i was Buying playing two doors yeah i was playing poker at the time 5 days a week like i was obsessed with poker so i was like oh i think this is a good investment but besides that i've probably <laughs> i think this is a good investment yeah. as a guy who's was had a foot in the poker world for a long time you're your judgment gets real cloudy about investments. Yeah, but and, I was uh, I was better than everyone because sure. I didn't have a fucking job. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like it's it was like I was. Yeah, I went I went to Vegas for two weeks. I stayed for a year and a half. Holy shit! It was just I was like, yo, I'm fucking hanging. Like what? Because I I would go and I'd play and I'd be like, oh my god, these guys play like once a month when their wife lets them, and I'm here playing five days a week. And and at the time, it wasn't where like poker was figured out. Mm -hmm. So I was just like, yo, these guys suck. Like. These guys are awful, and I was just like, yeah, I'm going to fucking stay and hang. But then I would drink and lose all the money in the other, you know, at the yeah. fucking strip club or fucking get, betting sports, which is so dumb, but I What would it. you say if you had if you had to guess? What would you drop total in that whole period of gambling? Oh, I made money. Really? For sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn. Yeah, because I had- it a hot hand. I yeah. set things up in a way to not lose. Like, I, I was like, okay, I can't take out more than $1,000 from the ATM. So, worst case scenario, if I go out fucking party and my friends are in town, this I lose a thousand dollars. Like okay, it's right. okay, we can we can make that back. We'll figure it out. But, uh, yeah, no, I definitely I did I did good. Like great, that's and, awesome. Yeah, no well, jet skis, nothing like that. Nothing ever. Like I get like renting that apartment what was in Vegas while I still had an apartment in New York was pretty insane. Yeah. <laughs> like that was what was that apartment like? Uh, it was awesome. It yeah. Was, when, <laughs> when did you guys? When did you like get? Like your own own place. So I like the day I turned eighteen, I moved out into a shithole because I didn't even like the first place I saw. I was like, "Yep!" Like I was so eager to get out, in and New then York. in New York, and then I stayed there for a year, and it was probably the most disgusting apartment you've ever seen. Like it was like my family helped me move, and we put all the stuff in, and we're like, "All right, bye." And then me and my friends like sat on the couch, started smoking blunts, and a year went by, <laughs> and it was just like, "I know that apartment, dude." It was my dresser was in the living room. There's pictures from that apartment in the living room, and my dresser's in the living room, and the, the, the drawers are fucking falling oh, off. I have oh, that man. same setup right now. Yeah. Oh, he wow. lives like a he lives like a rat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was, but but the worst part about it was there would be eight dudes in there at all times, like. In and out, in and out. We started smoking, then everybody starts doing cool, and then we're drinking, and then, and then all of a sudden it just turned into a year of like nonstop. Are you are you footing the bill for your for the your boys' party days too? Nothing, never, no. Never. Because I most of the time, the crazy thing is, once you become famous, nobody's charging you for drinks. <laughs> like you know what I mean? They'd be like, "Oh, you're coming to our place," and then my friends would be like, "Yo, let's fucking go." And like, so the first <laughs> yeah, guy, they want the free ride. Jamie Lynn had her her birthday at what became the best club in New York City. And I went to her birthday and the owner said to me, he's like, hey man, whenever you wanna come back. I went alone. And he's like, hey, whenever you wanna come back, like just come, like feel free, you know? I'm like, okay. And uh, <laughs> that's moving the dresser dude, in. Dude, <laughs> the next day I show up with like six goons, like yeah. for, of, of fucking from uptown. And I'm like, yeah, we're here in like our North Face jackets. And we're like, yeah, we're let's go, like what's up? And uh, 
he he lets us all in, like you know, six and he keeps me at the end, and he goes, "Hey, don't ever do this again." And I was like, oh, okay. He goes, you come whenever you want. He goes, don't do it. He goes, you bring one buddy when you come out. Because it was like, yeah, it was insane. Like, it was, because we also, we were 16, probably 17 at the time or something. Getting pizza delivered back there and shit. Dude, it looked, so now that I think about it, I get like anxiety just thinking about what I did. But I was like, yo, the guy said we can go tonight. Oh, like, man. you know, and I'm I like, know that, that and, young confidence. Yeah. And the place was like the hardest place to get in. It was face like, jackets. yeah, <laughs> it was, dude, it was the, and we were like, yo, so then. Every night I'd bring one friend and yeah, they never try. People would be like, yo, come sit at our table, come sit at our table, drugs, whatever I fucking wanted. Like it was just like, oh, okay. this is where we're going every night. And that's what I did. Holy And those were the boys you talk about, they're your boys from like childhood, like the kids yeah, you yeah, grew yeah. up with. So my yeah. best friend, uh, since I was six years old, I was just last year the best man in his wedding. Like still, nice. you know, Love that, that New York City. Yeah, I just, I need friends who will tell me when I'm being a fucking asshole and to gotcha. go fuck myself and, and that kind of shit. Yeah. That's all right, man. That's yeah. fucking wild. The North Face Jackets is fucking great, dude. Yeah. Can't tell me shit. At the club. I already thought you were awesome. You ruled, yeah. dude. Yeah. You're, <laughs> all <right. laughs> You're all right. I mean, it all came to a screeching halt at 28. Well, spoiler alert. <laughs> yeah. Hey, that's a decade of good times, though. Yeah. Oh yeah, man. From from twelve, I started drinking and smoking when I was twelve, and I went till till twenty eight. Of course, and you probably then... had a union job. It's <laughs> yeah, yeah. They were fucking driving the A train. <laughs> Holy shit! Huh. All right. Any uh, any vacations when you were a kid? Did you guys go anywhere? No, I mean there were times where my dad, my dad was more the vacation uh, guy. We would go on a few, like, cause so the woman he married had family in Florida, so we'd get in the car and drive oh, to fucking Florida. Jesus Christ. Yeah, and then we'd hang there, but they were like, "Yeah, stay as long as you want and hang out." So we would crash for like fucking a week or two, Give and it was free the drinks. best. You oh, got the she goons had, with you. She had a gallon of iced tea in the fridge. I'm like, this lady's the queen. <laughs> like, I'm like, this is unreal. It was crystal light. I remember I'd never tasted crystal, and it was just a nozzle, and I would just sit oh. there like a fucking. That my family probably knew I was gonna be a drug addict then, because I was just fucking seven years old. Filling up that cup, drinking it, filling up. They're like, come play in the pool. I'm like, I'm good. I'm like, it's time to fill up the fucking pitcher again, you know? Hey, Crystal Light's all right. Yeah. Crystal, yeah. So I just want to understand this. So the whole time the show was going on, you were in the two-bedroom with your mom and her and her roommate. Yeah, no. Right? So when we moved into the two bedroom, uh, there were roommates like in and out, and people she moved like three of her friends in at one time who needed fucking help or whatever. But they're uh eventually by the time I was the show started 12, 13. I'd say for most of that, it was probably just me and her in there, and then the guy who she ended up marrying. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. So things kind of qu quieted down. The money was coming in, stuff like that. You guys were you guys were in a good spot. The money was coming in, but we lived exactly the same. Like, the money was just not... Because in the beginning, the, the Sopranos' money wasn't a lot. It was probably, like, somewhere around 16, it started being like, oh, okay. But still, it was like, it was like an unspoken thing that, like, my money just went into account, and we lived the same. That's wild. Smart. Yeah, yeah. And then Very when I was smart. keeping it old school, when I was fucking 18, 19, 20, I still lived the same. Like my because my dad put this thing in my head of like never use credit cards. It's a scam. They're trying to get you. So whatever I, I needed to have on me at all times, what I was willing to, to throw Spend, around. Yeah. So like I never had more than like max five hundred dollars in my pocket. Yeah, you're not so leave that, the house with four grand to be like, well, I'm looking to spend this. Yeah. And yeah. also to me at the time, I had never even seen four grand. You know what I mean? <laughs> when I was like eighteen. So I'm like, okay, like I this is like I'd be like, yo, I got five bills in my pocket. This is crazy. And then I'd go out and I'd come home with seven hundred because I'd be playing fucking poker at the bar with somebody or like doing some shit. And I wouldn't like and, and never pay for drinks. Like I just I dude, I what never paid man, for drinks. He is scheming, dude. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, and that's what's so great about like He's party doing three drugs. Card and shit. Yeah, I was. Playing chess and watching you were? Square. Dude, I could do three card Monty right here. Crush. <laughs> Crush. Take yeah. all your money. Yeah. So the fucking <laughs> all right, uh, money up, boys. Yeah. Who's got cash? <laughs> Holy shit. The, but the thing, that's so what's great about party drugs is you never have to fucking pay. Like Coke, I never paid fucking for Coke. Now, weed and when I was doing Percocet, Percocet was very different because nobody's, nobody's like. Nobody's giving free Percocet. Nobody's doing three per <laughs> uh, Percocet parties. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it, that was a thing where it was like. Uh, like I'm doing Percocets I, I gotta do this It this was a quieter me. thing The pills were a quieter Yeah thing. where Coke was like Oh yeah the Coke's over there You know Me and my friends were like Oh my god These guys just leave Fucking Coke out Like this is insane And then weed Weed is 50-50 yeah. Like you know If you're partying Some people just hand you weed There's Or whatever But it wasn't the same As like Coke in New York City Was like Anywhere we went It was just 
there. Like free Coke. Mm -hmm. Like it was crazy. Alcohol too. Alcohol. Not for everybody. Just so you know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. You two had cocaine addictions at about the same time, probably with very different stories. (laughs) Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Try it now. Try it now. I bet you get free Coke now. (laughs) Holy shit, man. Uh That's fucking old school. Hmm. Uh, that's too I that's so different than what I imagined. That's crazy. Yeah. Uh any injuries as a kid? You break anything? Broke my arm. Uh yeah, two bones right here, and then I cracked my head open up here on my bike. And uh yeah, this this was crazy. This was crazy too. And then because my, my mom didn't want me to have surgery, so they just they had to place it and then oh. put a cast on me like forever. So I still look how crazy this is. So you know you can go like this. And you should be able to do that with the other hand. My hand goes like this. Whoa. What the fuck? Yeah, yeah. Like an so action like, figure. This is like my full range of motion with this, where this, like, I can do this. But this is it because they just, they set it, and then they fucking put it in a place. How old were you when this happened? So that, I think, was like right before Sopranos, maybe maybe 10 or it's 9 or 11. I know I was, it was after like 8 and before Sopranos, so between 8 and 12, Around there. Jesus. What kind of bike were you rocking back then? Yeah. Oh, just like a little whatever. Like, like a Huffy? Was, no, like a little bicycle. I don't even I don't even remember what it was. Okay. Yeah, whatever. Like, probably they went to Toys R Us, and it was like the first one. Oh, uh, when you walked like, in? Yeah, like, all right, that's thir- twenty nine ninety nine. <laughs> like, all right, <laughs> let's go. Yeah. <laughs> what uh, What age did you start riding the subway by yourself? Uh, subway, I don't know, but we were walking to school alone at like fucking seven, yeah, eight. Like, were you hopping the time. subway? Would you, would you jump to turnstile? No, we weren't big subway guys because we always stayed uptown. Gotcha. You know, like, yeah, we were always neighborhood guys. Like you said, Yorkville was like always what we like. We had clothing that said like York. Some kid made like Yorkville clothing and we all rocked it. I'm like, hey, Yorkville. But it was like, hey, meet us at the park. And the lowest we would go would be like John Jay Park. One of my friends lived on uh, like 60th. So sometimes we go to him. But like otherwise you never go past that. That's such a New York thing. It's so big. But you're like, you, your life is 12 blocks. Yeah, West Side? <laughs> yeah, dude. Never, yeah. They don't dude. cross over. No. Never. Go through the park at this time of the dude, day? N- now that I'm fucking 38, when I come here, I'm like, oh, I want to go to Central Park. I walk around. I'm like, I can't believe this was here the whole time. No idea. Yeah. It's fucking bugged out. Because we, I'd say, unless I was doing like Little League Baseball for the couple of years I did it, I would I never step foot in Central Park. Well, it's probably a different park at the time, too, right? There was... In the ninety, in the early ninety, it wasn't great, right? No, no but it, it was wasn't. Nice. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't one of those things where you're like we're, during the day, like nah, Fine. you could because we used to hang out till fucking two a.m. at Carl Schultz down on Eighty uh, Sixth Street in East End. We would be in there like at the, with the fucking two blocks from the mayor's mansion, throwing like fucking everybody bring two forties, and we just uh, you know there would be forty of us sometimes. Yeah, just, where, and that's the same park where my mom and my dad. Met? When they were fucking oh, seventeen, out, you yeah. know that's crazy. Yeah, when yeah. I when I lived up here the first time, we were I was on the we lived on the Upper East Side, eighty first and first. I worked at eighty third and third at this place called Martell's on the corner, and we never left. I didn't learn the subway, and I stayed in New York for ten years. Then moved to Philly, started doing comedy. Then we moved back in two thousand thirteen. Then I learned the subway. I never knew how to get anywhere because we were just up there. What was Martell's? Martell was a, it was an Irish bar, corner of 83rd and 3rd. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah, it was all right. It was a good time. So my, my grandfather was in Brady's every single day, sure. which is a 80, 83rd and 2nd or 82nd and yeah. 2nd or whatever. And like uh, Quinn's daughter or Ryan's daughter or something right, like that was yeah. up around that, up yeah, by there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was all right. The yeah. Italian place for ends was around the corner. Yeah, my my grandfather would go there every single day from work for lunch and never go back to work. <laughs> so they they would have like free sandwiches for the guys at like twelve. Go, everybody would go have sandwiches, and then just you're supposed to go back to work from like whatever one to three, four, five, and just like nobody shit was getting fixed after that. He was so he was a porter <laughs> on actually he was a porter on maybe eighty third and third. Okay. You know, right off a of third, the building with the awning. Yeah, there was the huge, the huge building across the street. Mike. So my grandfather was the porter there, and oh, then he was the super of our building. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he would walk down to Brady's every single day, and that's where I would go to fucking meet him. Damn, that's wild. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And they would put like forty maraschino cherries in a cup, and I would just sit at the end of the bar, and I'd be buzzing by the time I left. <laughs> yeah. Man, that kid likes his sugar. Huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I remember I I put in my first uh, parlay. I must have been like seven <laughs> years old. Yeah, and my grandfather. 
So my grandfather fucking all jacked uh, up on olives. I yeah, give me the Jets and the over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love Dan Marino at the time, and I'm like, I want the I want the Dolphins. I told him, and he's like, All right, and I'm like, you know, whatever. I I want to put ten bucks or twenty bucks that I got for like my birthday or some shit. And he's like, Okay, and then I lost, and I gave him the twenty, and he was like, The vig. And I was like, what is that? And he's like, that it's an extra thing you got to give on top when you lose. And I was mad at him for weeks. It was like it was like Arjun twenty, and then that extra two bucks. Old, vig. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he put the bet in. Yeah, he's, yeah. He got put him. the bet he's, in he's with coming the... out of his hands. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Plus, show me for the cherries. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, Holy shit, dude! That's crazy. What was the? Where were you getting forties? Did you have a fake idea, or did you have? I assume a spot that you're like they play ball. We had a spot that played ball, but then we would also make friends with like the homeless guys around there and be like, "Yo, if you buy us all shit, we'll buy, we'll you, buy you a four. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So this guy named Sarge. Uh, who like still thought he was in the you know the war or mm-hmm. whatever, and he would always buy us uh, shit, you know, and then he'd get too drunk and like disappear, and we'd be like, yo, where'd he go? But there was a place right on like 87th and First, or was it York 87th, like right around there that would that would usually be all right with us. Yeah. But then like somebody would go in there drunk at, at like one night and fucking steal shit from there, Fuck and then and up. then they and then they would wouldn't fucking be nice to us anymore. It was like always a fucking push and pull. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for a while they were really good. Those bodegas, if you if you if you got to know them, they were good with like credit and stuff like that. Yeah, they let you run up a little bit of a tab. Hell yeah, yeah. yeah. Next time, yeah. yeah, of course, yeah. Those yeah. guys. And my my favorite thing, like I remember, I was dating this girl from London at one time, and she came to stay with me here. And I'm just sitting on the couch, and I reach for my phone, I grab it, I pick it up. I'm like, hey, I'm like, what's up, buddy? And I don't even say anything else. I go, yeah. Uh, like, you know, four packs of Marlboro Lights, two six packs of Corona, and then I hang up, and she's like, what was that? And I'm like, oh, I ordered from the deli. Mm-hmm. And she's like, you can do that here? And I'm like, you can't? Yeah. It's that, a very New York thing. Dude, it was the great, I would you do that You don't know shit. Sarge? Yeah. <laughs> I would do that shit, and he was open 24 hours, whenever you want to call. What that? And that was like from, I lived on that spot from like 19 to whatever, 28 or whatever, and I would just call him constantly. He was my boy. There's one down in uh, the East Village. It's next to a comedy club. And you go in. It's right on the corner, you know, fucking second and whatever. And it's a great bodega, but they're so mean because all of their business is just delivery. Yeah, so, like, yeah. you're, it's just like a warehouse for them. And yeah. you're in their way. They don't <laughs> yeah. want to fucking ring you yeah, up. Yeah, it's not the same. They treat you like such fucking dickheads when you walk in there. Yeah. What did you call your grandparents? What were their What were their names? Pop and Grandma. Nothing, nothing okay. great. Yeah, it was just Pop. Uh, what was your first concert? But his, his nickname was Buster. Sorry, because at the, at the bar they said he was like the biggest ball buster. That's yeah, awesome. Yes, they called him Buster. Uh, what did you say? What was my first rock? concert? First concert. Mom took me to Rolling Stones. No Damn. shit. At fucking uh, the Garden. Old MetLife. So it was uh, Giant Stadium. Yeah. No shit. At fucking Giant Stadium. Awesome. And I think it was she only did that. I think because my dad was like, I'm taking Robert to Van Halen at Jones Beach. And she was like, you're not taking him to his first fucking concert. And she was like, come on, you're coming with me. That's and we went to fucking Rolling Stones. <laughs> and I remember being like, yo, this is fucking sick. Like, Damn. it was dope, man. Huh. What was? <laughs> Still made the Van Halen show the yeah. next night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Played both ends against the middle. <laughs> yeah. What was the last concert you went to? Uh... That's tough, man. I don't know. Ever since I got sober, I'm like, I can't, I can't yeah. do anything. Nah, I like, being around groups. So I went to the Giants game on Monday. Nice. There you uh, go. But where did I? Yeah, it was fucking, they got crushed. But <laughs> uh, where did I? What's the last? Man, that's tough. I don't know. It's been a while. I, I went through a phase when I was like, you know, what I did use Sopranos as leverage for, for sure, is like when 16 to 22, I was, or whatever, 16 to 18, I was really into like uh, heavy metal, death metal, all that stuff. Oh, shit. So I'd go see fucking Pantera, Slipknot. I'd be fucking backstage with them, hanging out, and that was the fucking, that was the best. That yeah, was they, the only question I wanted to ask you about the show. Did you keep the Slipknot jacket? Did you steal that? They so the reason why I was wearing all that stuff on the show is because I was wearing it in real life. Okay. So I would have all that stuff in real life, and David Chase would fucking see me. Not that he needed any help; he's a fucking genius. Sure. But he would see me fucking. With a fucking Pantera shirt or whatever, and then a couple weeks later, yeah. my character would be wearing uh, that Slipknot the Pantera jacket was shirt. all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That thing was tight. Yeah. Have, have you been around Slipknot like after a show when they pull the mask off and they're like, like, ah, that sex song was a little. It's got to be chilling, so bizarre. With them. They were the best. So the first time I ever went to a Slipknot show, I, I don't remember how old. it was. Nineteen ninety nine, maybe. So uh, maybe. So I'm fourteen, and we roll up outside, and I meet Sean, who's the clown, who was uh, one of the drummers. And he's like, uh, he's like, yeah, come on, let's go in. And we go to walk in, and they're like, no, he's fucking 14. It was at the Roxy. I think you have to be maybe 18 or yeah, 21. 21. I don't know. Probably. So they go, he's not coming in. And he goes to the guy. He goes, well, he's my son, so if he's not coming in, we're not playing. 
And like Damn. right away, which Damn. he'd probably done, you know, over and over. But like he's like, you know, so we're not playing. And the guy's like, all right, like opens the fucking rope. And me and my boy walk in. He brings us backstage. And they're, and this is like before they were massive. So they're all sitting in one room that's like half the size of this. And it's like fucking, what, there eight of them or nine? Yeah. I can't even remember. Nine because zero or some shit. And they were just hanging. And they would do a thing before his shows where they would flip for punches. So they take a quarter and you call heads or tails. And whatever it lands on, punch the other one in the face. Jesus. Nuts. Dude, these guys were nuts. You're like, seeing this at 14? Yeah, yeah. And, th- and I was like, oh, my God, this just opened up my whore. And then I'm like, I'm go- I, I read because th- those Roadrunner records they were all on at the time. And I, the people there started sending me clothes and all this stuff because they found out that I was a fan. And then it was just like, you know, I'm hanging out with all these guys. I'm going to fucking dysfunctional family picnic and announcing bands and like all this Jesus is crazy, man. Christ. Yeah, and the whole time I have like six dollars in my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> really? But like no, straight. no, no credit card. No, I'm like, I think about it now. I'm like, how the fuck did I get around? Mm-hmm. Like, it's just crazy. What did you? What did your parents say when when you were doing that? What did you tell them you were? Like I said, I had the lock on the door. <laughs> I had, I'm fucking. I'm making money. Like there was no. I was, and they were city kids, so they understood. Like, you know. By by fourteen, a city kid is like twenty five. Yeah, you're on yeah. your own. You know, it's like, like yeah, I, I was walking to school by my own. Like I said, what seven, eight? So like yeah. there was no, you know, you're I, taking event- cabs by yourself, all that kind of stuff, just zipping yeah, around. Yeah, but again, yeah. we we really stayed uptown. Like mm-hmm. you know, like you could almost always find me ten blocks from my crib. Like I I was never somebody who was like, hey guys, let's go to fucking Worcester Street. Like you know, it, I I didn't <laughs> even <laughs> know downtown. Like I really didn't. Like it I'm was such just like an uptown kid. Yeah. Thing to say, oh Worcester Street. <laughs> yeah, I never knew any. Like I still I come downtown sometimes and I'm like I don't know where like yeah. things because it's like as soon as the numbers you stop, know they got buildings and shit down there too. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Huh. Man. Okay. Wild. What, what's your favorite restaurant in New York? Oh yeah, let's talk a little bit about that. It depends what we're what we're to, just uh, open ended like anything, or you're are we coming saying to Italian. Town, you're coming into town for one night. You're like, I got any. You can get any. any I mean, place. Don Pep's in Queens, but it's not in the city, but it's yes. in Queens. But Don Pep's in really? Queens, Italian, is fucking outstanding. But it's also a vibe. Damn. Like it's like oh, cash only. This, stuff. but all, JG Melons uh, is fucking great. Oh, Sec, uh, Third Ave. Those burgers. Those bur- and also that's like, like walking into a time machine, too. dude. It's the, the little best. The fucking the little chip French fries. Oh my cottage fries, oh. unfucking. And you go like, what's so great about this? You go, I don't know, but it's just Something perfect. It. So like good. the burger, the everything. It's the just attitude a- on the waitress, the fucking oh old bartender, God. the wood on the bar. And then they had. I remember bringing a girl to fucking Jackson Hole when it was on Second Avenue, and she ordered a chicken sandwich. I was like, we're done. Remember how big those burgers were at Jackson Hole? They were crazy. Yeah, mad. massive, crazy. Yeah. Man. They were all right. Hmm. But you said you're a little bit of a foodie. Yeah, yeah. Now I've, you know, ever since I got sober and then all of a sudden I started fucking watching food documentaries and I'm like, all right, I want to stay away from this. I want to stay away from that. I'm not, you know, fucking, I want to eat organic as much as I can. I cook my own food. Now I'm like very, you know, I start like somebody just, again, it's like, it's like the things that unlocked when I was young where I was like, what? Like somebody was like, so when I got sober, it was my 28th birthday. I took 35 Molly. And I was just up for, but I had build, been building up a tolerance for years, like living in Vegas. And Jesus shit. Christ! Dude. Yeah, and when I when I was done with that session, I remember thinking I did permanent damage to myself. Like I was like, oh man, like I did it this Not time. Not bouncing back from this. Yeah, and I was like, yeah. if I get out of this, uh, I'm done. Like uh, I'm not going back. And that was over ten years ago. And uh, I did. I I fucking. Like five, six days later, I went to a doctor. I'm like, yo, I can't hold down any food. Like, I'm just a mess. Like, I don't know what's going on. And he's like, when's the last time you had a vegetable? And I'm like, oh, and chicken fried rice, they put shit. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, so- I had a cup of noodles. There's some peas and carrots in yeah. there. Yeah. I'm like, I, so I have that. And the guy looked at me like I was insane. I had when some I said, lettuce with marinara. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, we hate on people for eating <laughs> fucking vegetables around here, Doc. I, uh, but yeah, so I, and he's like, hey, he's like, go. And he told me, eat vegetables. But he goes, go to this place. And get a green juice. And I'm like, come on, dude. And he's like, you haven't kept anything down for over five days. He goes, go and do it and see how you feel. And I fucking drank this juice and I came out of place and I was like, I think I'm on ecstasy. Like, I felt like I was on ecstasy. Yeah. Like, because my body had nothing in it for five had days. No vitamins, dude. And had nothing in it. Like, no, nothing good. Like, all I ate was chicken fingers, french fries, pizza, burgers until I was, you know, 28. I still do that. Yeah. <laughs> I never. Right. wrong with a chicken finger. I was 30 before the first time where somebody was like forced me to try fish, you know? Really? Like I was like, okay. For, yeah, I had like tuna sandwiches growing up, but sure. like never anything at a restaurant. Whereas, and now I'm like, 
Holy do shit. Do you do oysters and stuff like that now? You no, like no, no, no. I'll do sushi. Do sushi. I'll do sushi, but still on the oyster shit, I'm like, nah, that's uh, that's crazy. Shrimp, crab, lobster, you like that stuff? No, I'm still not on that. I'm like a salmon, tuna, okay. like this kind of thing. I like fucking Branzino's nice. You a nice Branzino. Yeah, uh, yeah. Branzies. Let's go. Uh, what's, uh, this is a thing we talk about. We've talked to Tom about it. What's the biggest thing you've dropped on a dinner at like a nice, like you've gone out? Anything crazy? Yeah, I mean, I so I remember uh, actually when I was in, well, I don't know if this is the biggest, but like a two person dinner for sure with no drinks. Uh, I was dating this girl and she came to meet me in Austin before I moved there when I went to go visit Jamie. And she gets off the plane, she meets me at my place, we bang. And then we, <laughs> and, and, and we're like, we're, we had like, we had an eight That's o'clock. That's a pro move, bang before dinner. Only. Pro yeah. move. Only. Especially, I only eat once a day. So I'm always. What are you, a snake? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we I have. had an antelope we, earlier. We, we, we have sex. I shed. <laughs> we, uh. So we 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 bang. I, we go and we had. <laughs> I won't use the no. I bang. <laughs> yeah, he we stuck have, that in there pretty we, well, good. Because we were ravenous. That's what I'm trying to say. We yeah. get to the we get to the restaurant and we and it was like a sushi place. Uh, first time I had it. Now it's like my favorite place to go to. It was like 600 bucks for just the two of us. That's, no that's, drinks. That's big for two for two people. That's two people, no big. drinks, that's no great. booze. All right. Yeah, yeah. 600. As it was, I was like, damn. Especially when like you know we're eating things that are fucking every. It's like one bite at a time, and sure. all of a sudden the check comes up like it's fucking 600 dollars. <laughs> I only like, got eight bucks on me. Yeah. yeah. Somebody give me three Carmonte. Yeah, but again, like Zagora's was 52 thousand. 52 thousand. <laughs> yeah, he wrote it down and we framed it. It's on the bar right there. He didn't Holy want to say it out shit. loud, and then we couldn't. He, he wow. slid it over to us. I'm like, asking for a raise <laughs> when I get back to Austin, Tom. Just so you know, it was a birthday. It was a large. It was a large table. He said, "Whose yeah. birthday? It was his. I think it was his. Oh, okay. I think it was maybe his four. It was. It was a big birthday for him. Some and vino. They yeah. Said they, he's like, yeah. They run yeah, it out. Yeah. I think it was like a thirty person. It was like a a big thing. They run it out the whole restaurant. Yeah, I mean, 52, At least that's what he said. Maybe it was just him G's. and Christina. I don't know. <laughs> 52 G's. That's, that's why. His head know, almost came off. I, I it's a did, <laughs> Yeah. I did one time in L.A. go to a dinner for, um, I mean, now this sounds like nothing. But I, <laughs> I went to a, this special dinner that was like, I don't know how many people it was, but it was like a $30,000 I mean, dinner Jesus. where like every course they came out with and they described, oh, this is, then they like custom made. So they asked the two people who were throwing the dinner like what they want. And then they cut, like, she said her favorite um, meal was a fish filet from McDonald's. So they made, like, this like insane. Like a heightened version of that. And they're, like, the, yeah. in, the, in the tartar sauce is 50 grams of blah, 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 caviar. And they're, like, telling you all the shit. And, I, and I'm, like, boop. Like, you know, I'm just sliding <laughs> yeah. that shit over to my boy. I'm, like, I don't want that shit. But, yeah, it was, it was really. Dude, it was you really, are a real one, dude. It was really <laughs> fucking. It was nice. And it was, it was fancy. It was cool, yeah. Okay. Oh, shit. Damn. Hmm. Man. All right. Do some more of your garbage cues here. Yeah. Uh, you flossing every day? Uh, no. I, I have the sticks, so it helps a lot. But okay. I certainly, if it was string, I would never floss. But with the sticks, I, I get in there. When there's something in there, I get in there. That's how I, I go about it. You know, if, I, if I'm eating fucking cashews, I'm going with the stick. Going in. I'm going with the stick. What about the toothpaste? What are you using? Are you trying to stay organic on all that stuff? Yeah, I try. now I try and get everything from Whole Foods. Really? I try and go real. What yeah. are you using? Tom's? Yeah, Tom, so I have two. I have the Tom's with the... Aluminum? <laughs> yeah, yeah, extra aluminum. <laughs> no, the, uh, what's the stuff that's in there? Not fucking tartar. What's fluoride? Big fluoride. fluoride. Okay. fluoride. I got one with fluoride and one without because I think when you do all no without fluoride, your breath starts to stink. So I got I got the yeah I got the fluoride that I use uh during in the morning and then I got the no fluoride I use at night. Okay. Unless I'm dating at the time, then I go with the fluoride. Are you getting the Whole Foods delivered? You go? Are you going and food shopping at Whole Foods? Uh, I so I didn't discover like Whole Foods delivery. I don't know if it was like COVID or right before where I was like, holy shit! But I don't like it. I love to fucking stroll you a fucking Whole Foods, there. man. I lo I love to read fucking ingredients. I like to know mm -hmm. what's going on. Yeah, unless and there's sometimes where like you have to do an order, but normally um I I love being in a fucking Whole Foods are nice. Did man. you say so? Yeah. You don't drive. No. So how you get how you, get how you getting around Uber. down there? Uber a lot. Uber I walk everywhere. a lot too. I'm a big walk guy. Wait, like so I'll you'll... I'll walk five six miles. Really? Just to go so yeah because I just I love walk. I'm in New York City. Like I love walking. Man. But I've never heard anybody. So you'll down Uber in to Texas with no car. You'll yeah. Uber to Whole Foods. 
Yeah. No, I walked to Whole Foods. I'm within walking distance oh, of Whole Foods. Oh, all right. Yeah, so walk yeah, yeah. it back. Yeah. I usually walk back unless it's like a big shop, then I'll Uber back. Huh. I've never heard anybody using an Uber for to move groceries. Damn. Yeah, and they and they will say, like, I've taken an Uber to uh, uh, Whole Foods before if I'm, like, coming from somewhere, and they're like, you want me to wait for you? Like, so they, they do they, it. They well, know yeah, the deal. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. And I'm like, no, I'm going to be in here for three hours. <laughs> I got a lot of reading. Yeah. To do now. <laughs> yeah. You make your bed in the morning. And you know, I never did. And I think it was like Jordan Peterson was on Rogan. Yeah. And he's like, he's like, hey, scumbag. He's like, if you want, <laughs> you know, he's like, if you want to be out there fucking talking shit about people all the time, which I do, he's like, yeah, you at least need to fucking clean your own room, you know, make your bed, do this. So I started doing that. And um, I'm one of those people where like uh, OCD, where like I did it once and now it's been. Four years, I've never now not done. Now you do it. And yeah, what's the yeah. house like down there? You got a nice setup? Uh, no, I got a one bedroom with nothing in it. So like my my buddy said, um, my place looks like one of Jason Bourne's fake apartments. <laughs> sure, you got a go bag, <laughs> three yeah, passports, yeah, yeah. a handgun. I, I, like the, I have the bag I came here with. I got a fucking yeah. uh, that is dude. That is like a, <laughs> yeah. an old school spy bag. You rolled. <laughs> you in never up. know when you gotta go, bro. <laughs> I got the fucking. Uh, I got I got the TVs, I got the bed, I got the couch. There's nothing else in my apartment. Multiple TVs. Uh, I got one in the bedroom, one, one in, the in the living room. room. Yeah, yeah. Okay. What's the bed? Is it a king size? Uh, no, queen. Okay. Yeah. Man, can't get a read on this guy. I know. <laughs> it's wild. Um, where do you keep your butter at the house? Keep it in the fridge. Keep it on the counter. Uh, I have one in each. How about that? That's Let's classy. Because no one has that. Because answer. I like the cold for the the pan when I'm cooking, uh -huh. and I like the spreadable when I want to spread. Nice. Salted on the outside. Uh, I do all my own salt. I don't want their salt. I do my own salt. Yeah, I do unsalted butter, and then I add my own salt. Man. Dude, I'm I'm a lunatic when you it comes do like to the food. Sea now. salt on the top. Is that how you do it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So whatever whatever I put the butter on, then I hit it with the. I got the grinder sea salt. That's yeah, freaking. you got the power grinder. or You got the, the regular crank. So I I got the power grinder and it didn't work for the sea salt, but it works for the pepper. So I power grind the pepper, hand grind the salt. Man, yeah, I got answers one. for whatever whatever <laughs> question you fucking. You got, got the mortar and pestle. <laughs> Like the is that what it's called? The mortar. And yeah, pestle? mortar yeah. and pestle. Mortar. Like it's like the rock. Thing like a oh, witch would no, use. no, no, no. Like for uh, like a witch. crashing up walnuts or <laughs> yeah, something? Yeah, yeah, like for uh, uh, how they make, what's the avocado? So guacamole. Guacamole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, we, what we, is that called? Mortar? A mortar, mortar and, and pestle. pestle. Wow, mortar and pestle. Sounds like, like a bad law firm. <laughs> we'll lose for you. The, the, this is big on the show. When you go to the deli counter, uh, do you get your meat sliced thin? And I also, what's the level of recognition from deli guys you receive? Uh, it, it totally depends where I am. It totally, and also like when I was in New York going to my delis, they don't give a fuck because I go in there every day. But I, you know, I remember the first time I went to Italy, you yeah. know, fucking Italy, sure. and I got, got online to get like fucking sliced meats or whatever. And there's somebody in line, I get in line behind and I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm like waiting a long time because they're like going on and on. And somebody comes from outside of the back and they see me and they run to grab like a piece of paper and I'm like, oh, you know, I'm like. Nah, Guy's coming to get an autograph. All right, yeah, it's an Italian place. I get it. Blah, blah. And he comes running from behind the thing and with the paper, and he hands it to me, and it's like a piece of prosciutto, uh -huh. like to give me prosciutto because I felt bad that I was waiting in line. Uh. So now I've never been so sad to get a piece of prosciutto because <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I'm like, I'm such a tool. Like you I put think, your sunglasses on. Yeah, like I'm like, I'm such a tool. I thought this guy was like rushing to get an autograph, but he was just like, oh, he felt bad because I was waiting there. The guy had like stacks of, he was doing like a wine and cheese night in front of me. <laughs> Aren't you the guy from Slipknot, son? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Holy shit! You ever have a lunchable? Yeah, yeah, back in the day. Okay. For sure. Yeah, disgusting. Now I would never. Never touch it. No, no, no. You guys, Would you guys eat Lunchables now? No, never. Well, that's crazy. Maybe. Uh, wow. No. I, I, Good I was, for you. I was hey. never a big Lunchable guy. Uh, what kind of, what foods do you have at the house? Like, what do you keep on hand? So I just, it's it's depressing. No, hold on. No couch? Yeah, yeah. I said, oh, I, got yeah, couch. I got the couch. couch got the couch, couch the bed. bed two t it's like the two TVs here, couch here, bed here. That's it. There's Wait, nothing else the in my room. room. No, no, no. So it's on, on opposite ends of the wall. So the two TVs are on that wall, and that oh, wall separates the... Yeah, gotcha, yeah. gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. There is literally... Oh, the only other thing I have in there, I finally got a fucking Roomba. Awesome. <laughs> Man, I can't freaking quit bragging, will you? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. saying that like that's it's a big two, purchase. Saying that like it's two thousand three. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I had a Roomba. Yeah, that was it for you. Yeah. Okay. So what what kind of food do you have in? Like, if we came over right now. I'm like, hey, I'm hungry. What do you got? It it's literally like salmon from a specific origin. Like, you know, I'm like really high end because I 
I na- I don't like to feel like shit mm-hmm. ever since I've crossed over into like not abusing. Like yeah. up until like 28 to fuck, because then it took me a couple of years to get off the pills. But like at 28, I stopped the drinking. And then like all of a sudden, I remember like waking up and being like, oh, I feel good when I wake up. And like I had never felt that since I was, I don't know, 10, even maybe even before, because I was always eating such garbage, like tr- horrible. Never mm-hmm. had any sort of like hey, maybe eat some protein. Like, you know, it was just, I was eating so bad growing up. And um, around 30, I started realizing like, oh my God, if I eat good, I feel, feel good. Better, yeah. And then, and then like, you know, now it's, and also it's like, I have nothing else to do, but be healthy. So you're like, you know, I, I, I didn't, on that, yeah. I didn't work for fucking years. I don't have a family, like, like I don't have a wife, or kids. So it's like, oh, this is all I got to do. And, and you know, the rare occasion where I eat like shit the next day, I'm like, what is fucking wrong with you? Like, I just feel terrible. Mm-hmm. What's a typical order at Whole Foods? What are you, what are you dropping? A couple what, hundred? Uh, yeah, oh, at least, yeah. I, I go, uh, but now what I've started, because I do the walk, what I've started doing is I order chicken and fish from like one of these, you order it and it shows up at your door uh-huh. kind of place. So I fill the fucking freezer with that. And then my, fr- yeah, my, my, my fridge is just like always the same shit. Like, you know, it's like fucking lemon juice, lime juice, lettuce, like mustard. Like, you know, I don't have. You like a Trader Joe's? You a Trader Joe's man? No, I heard what bad. I heard conspiracies about Trader Joe's that got in my head. <laughs> oh, this guy's nuts. Yeah. Oh, dude, I'm nuts when it comes to food. I'm crazy. And that's, that's probably the hardest part about dating. So when I'm dating somebody, like I've, I've talked to girls where I go, like, I'm like, oh, this is going good. And then all of a sudden, like, she's like, yeah, I just get McDonald's every day on the way home. I'm like, we're done. Really? <laughs> like, when was the that- last time you had fast food? Years? Oh, my God. Really? Yeah, yeah. Like over good five years. Good for Crazy. you. Crazy. I haven't had anything fried in years. Like Whoa. no French fry. No, I'm, dude, I'm. So when you go out to dinner now, it's, you, you, it's super limited. No, Keep because, real- they, you, again, once you start eating fish, it changes everything. <laughs> Like before you I eat these before things. I eat before I eat fish I'm like you can't eat anywhere and be healthy now I'm like oh my god I could just eat fucking fish so usually because I only eat once a day I'll I'm like a multiple entree kind of guy where I'll be like all right I'll get the fucking salmon and the branzino and the fucking this or you know really whatever a school of fish at lunch dude I I put back like my one meal I mean you so, you know the first season of Sopranos I was like 200 pounds I was a fucking big I was a real big kid I love mm-hmm. to eat man so I that's why I eat once a day because like. There's no diet for me that's sustainable because I, I don't feel pleased. Gotcha. So I just eat that once a day. I eat a fucking ton of food. And like when I go to, I go to Jamie's house every Sunday in Austin and I'll eat and then with her family and then her family has dessert. Then they start doing like their after dinner activities and they give the kids a bath. This, they come out. I'm still eating. Like I'll, I'll eat for a minimum two hours. Can she throw down in the kitchen? Is she a good cook? She's a good cook. Nice. Yeah. She's a she's a good cook. But when, when you eat at the restaurants, are you telling them, "Let me get the salmon. Just give me a broiled, no sauce or nothing like that." No, I I try not to be a pain, but also like so I so you'll get the dish, whatever it is. Yeah, but I also will vet spots. You know what I mean? Where like if I see they're doing something insane, I'm like, all right, I'm not fucking, I'm not, I'm not gonna not do going that. So you're not doing like the Berblanc sauce over the no no no. Over the I'll just like with uh, the mashed potatoes. Like no no no. If I if I like I went to have steak the other night and it was just fucking salt pepper. That's all I want. And they're like, we'll put the sauce. I'm like I don't want any fucking sauce. Just fucking give me a good steak salt pepper i'm good man i could i could eat rice protein salad just for fucking every meal but then after is when i like treat myself i start i have like fucking oh i have like weird shit after i eat like i'll have fucking oatmeal and then i have these things called like um honey mamas and just like all this kind of like chocolatey stuff that's made with like that honey yeah. and gotcha. fucking yeah. maple syrup and like that's whole foods has all that shit yeah. you know so i just fucking go crazy what about the uh, barbecue in Austin? Love. Yeah. I'll I'll hit those spots, but in my head I go these guys get the meat from like a good farm or whatever. But I yeah, like like you know, a couple times a year I'll crush and really fucking <laughs> enjoy it. And then so the the place I the sushi place that I spent all the money at that I go all the time now. It's like the fucking my favorite spot. They opened up a restaurant with the best barbecue chef and it's like an Asian smokehouse. Oh my god. Nuts. When you go, when you, next time you guys go to Austin, you go to Loro. It's called Loro. It's fucking We went great. there and we, yeah, we went there. You didn't like it? No, but do we not like it? We didn't stay. That's the place where you walk in, you order at the bar. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, oh, it's like yeah, I dipped. Inside yeah, it, and outside. You didn't like the. Yeah, I didn't, it, well, it was crazy hot. We were yeah. down there a couple weeks ago. Oh, yeah. yeah it was like that. 117 degrees. 
Yeah, we yeah we got a table. We thought it was going to be more we Korean to, like, barbecue. Mm. We wanted to like sit down and have. Uh, and then the dude came over and was like, "Go to the bar." I was like, "Yeah, we're out of here." Oh, you missed out. It was man. also packed. The food is fucking awesome. But I thought there. you were talking about the 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 couple, the 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 chefs that have the. They're like a Michelin star chef. They had a sushi place, but they also opened up that burger place that we went, we went there to with Bobby, Bobby Lee. Lee. Um, it's a really good burger place it's in like the back N- of a bar. Nordak or something like that. It's, the, it's back of some club. She has, a, she has a famous about. pasta. She has a famous pasta place. I forget. So we it. fucked up not going to that place. Yeah, yeah. God damn that it. That place is really everything they do. Because it's like, it's like barbecue mixed with Asian, which is fucking awesome. Yeah, it's like, it's right. just everything. You're like, holy shit, this is fucking great. Hmm. Do you know how to use chopsticks? I learned once I started eating sushi. I'm still not good. Like I'm, uh, I'm yeah, not yeah. confident, but I can get by. But mm. like I still, you know, I get fatigued about ten minutes into the meal, yeah. where I, like I, I'm start not going. grabbing good. Yeah, where it's not, and that's why. Like what's cool is when you go to these like really upscale uh, sushi places, you're supposed to eat with your hands. Yeah, do your hands. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm culturally appropriate. Sure. That's what I tell you. Know, so I'm not using the fucking sticks. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not using, using the, the sticks. sticks. <laughs> Uh, do you own any binoculars? Uh, no, but I think my my friend's mom got me them as like a birthday gift or something. So there might be a pair <laughs> floating or around somewhere. That's a weird, yeah. that's a weird present from your buddy's mom. I know, it, dude. It happened. You know, I love her. <laughs> she's the best. She, you know, she's a a, a saint. That's um, awesome. Are you currently in a beef with a neighbor? Uh, no. No, very. When I was 18 and I had that place, I had the ultimate beef with a neighbor. I'm, shy. I'm sure they loved you. Yeah, yeah. it was bad. <laughs> the guy would throw beer bottles from his place upstairs. He was a nut, too. It wasn't like he was some saint. And then what's crazy is when, so he, I moved out when I was 19. The person who owned the building called me when I was like 22 and was like, hey, if you want to move back in here, he died. And I'm like, okay. Like, I was just so moved on at that point. I'm like, what? Like, but okay. And And then I found out from her son that the guy had no family no friends left and he wrote on his wall i leave everything too and it was the per it was the woman at the massage place around the block the no asian massage shit. place yeah. and he left everything to that lady he wrote it on the wall damn yeah man what a way to go yeah shit. and you throw fucking beer bottles constantly at us i mean you were probably raging down there it was bad yeah Eight music dudes, just smoking blunts yeah fucking blasted all night blasted slip slip not, yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 that double bass alone they got nine drummers that fucking <laughs> yeah band. yeah i'm surprised the guy didn't kill us <laughs> ever swam in a river uh yeah i'm sure i mean i don't even you go to barton springs down there take a dip i haven't been yet but i want to go there you go oh it's all yeah, right yeah, yeah? we try yeah. to make it a point to go every time we're there oh wow feels okay. good the best city attraction anywhere in america really yeah, it's nice. awesome yeah it's the coolest standalone thing it no other place has something like that it's cool it's close yeah, yeah. it's tight i've walked by but i never went in i should yeah. go in yeah, yeah it's all right man okay yeah it's good nice and, and cool the and, water and what do you recommend they're going for like making a day out of it you no, pop just in. Go for a dip ah, hour two yeah. hour. yeah just go jump take a swim time. jump off the diving board and it's, there's a place to like put a towel and lay down when you dry off yeah it's like shit. a little hill okay yeah it's all right it's a good time you all do right. cold plunges i'll or... tell them you sent me <laughs> <laughs> Remember those two fat that idiots that went down here? Dude, I almost broke the diving board there. I oh. swear to God. It fucking like almost touched the water. It's I still, was so it's bad. Still, it's still <laughs> shaking. <laughs> Do you enjoy any of these smells? Asphalt, gas, horses, yep. or uh, magic horses, marker? Horses, I don't even remember, but uh, gas is the best. Yeah. Love yeah. gas. That's big guy, gas this guy, guy likes redlining, dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a big gas guy. But, but on the big. other end of that, I love laundry. You Love like the smell of laundry. fresh laundry. Oh, my God. But not the candle, like the fake shit. I want, like, we're walking by a laundromat. I'm like, oh, my God. Yeah, it's like, the yeah, best. Yeah, that. When it's blowing out that oh, warm feeling. We just yeah. caught that last night. There was the, they were, we walked by the hotel, and the garage door was open. They were doing the laundry, and it was a, <sighs> such a so New York nice. moment. The fucking, it just hit you. A wave the fluff and fold in New York, the way that smells, whatever they use, it's yeah. probably the worst thing for you. Uh, but you that doing, smells so good. It's whatever they were putting in those envelopes sent to people after 9-11. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yeah. 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 Are you doing your laundry? now are you just sending it out what are you doing yeah so i'm again one of my ocd things is like i get a little crazy about the germs because i used to just hand so long story short i got an std in my early 20s and ever since then i've it's just changed who i am like okay. i just i'm like i don't want to get fucking because mm-hmm. i so i got an std and i i called the doctor thinking like because like I, I didn't know at the time of anything but so many stds i'm like i just have aids and i'm dying like sure. that's what you think you go there yeah right and i'm like oh my god so i called the doctor and he's like okay yeah you could come in like next wednesday 
So it was like, oh, buddy, I ain't got that kind of time. I'm just sitting there, like, uh, just dripping. So thinking, like, I'm dying. I'm, I'm, I'm writing on my wall who I'm leaving my shit to, you know. <laughs> I'm like, this is it for me. Like, I'm, I'm a goner. And then I get there, and they do Believe the it fucking. All Sarge. Yeah, and he's like, well, he's like, here's the thing. Here, what I could see what you have is blah, blah, blah. And he's like, uh, 50% of people have that. Like, it happens all the time. Everyone in college has it. He's like, I give you this shot in the ass. He's like, but then, and this is where it fucking, this is what stuck with me. He goes, I got to stick this Q-tip. Oh, yeah. In there, get some stuff, send that off, and I'll find out if it's anything more serious. So now it's another fucking two weeks. Yeah. I'm sitting at home, and I'm wait- and after getting a Q-tip stuck in the head of my... It was just so bad, and that was one of those other things where I was like, if I get through this, like I'm, I'm the, yeah, yeah, yeah straightening up, uh, yeah, like I'm, I'm not fucking, you know, being uh, crazy. So now with with my laundry, yeah, I don't trust it because I used to just, yeah, whatever. Like I, there was a guy in the building I grew up in. What are named, you fucking your socks? What are yeah. you doing? <laughs> <laughs> there was a guy in the building I grew up with named Vinny who would shit in the washer. Oh, he would shit in the washing machine, and it never, you know, as a kid, I'm like, oh yeah, whatever. Like you know, they fucking shut one down, use the other ones or whatever. And as a kid, I'm like, whatever. Now I'm like, I can't. So I've been in New York for a couple of weeks, and I hit up my friends. I'm like, yo, can I come use your fucking thing? Because I can't I go to that. a public. I do understand that. Sure. I don't. I don't hate that. I have. I have a very similar with germs and stuff like that. But I have with them with the drop off and pick up. I have a kind of out of sight, out of mind thing. I'm like, it's better than the ones in my building. I don't have one in my unit, so I'm like, just fucking. If I can't see it, I'm assuming they're using the cleanest machine and we're going to move forward. And you live in the city now? Yeah. yeah. Shit in the laundry. What the fuck? Yeah. Oh, they were crazy. Dude, in my fucking building growing up, there were some wild dudes. <laughs> wild dudes. You using the organic stuff in, in the in the laundry? Yeah, I love yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Seven generation? What are you using? Uh, or uh, seven generation, but so I'll use like the Whole Foods brand or okay. whatever. Whatever uh, they got that's like a fucking yellow tag, you know, on sale or whatever. I'm not, I'm not big about what it is. I'm just like, I want to know that there's not like poison in here. Sure. Got Hopefully, you know, um, you ever bought the floor model of a TV or an appliance? I know I bought the floor model of something one time when they were like, you could have this one. And it was whatever, but I can't remember what it was. I don't think it was a TV. Uh, no. I'm, so I, I never bought a nice TV until I moved to Austin because, and, and guess what? It's fucking lost on me. Yeah. I don't get it. Like all my TVs before that were like three hundred dollars. Sure. Fucking. I'm kind of the same way. Yeah, and then so like I when I moved to Austin, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna do the nice thing, and it was like a five thousand dollar TV on sale for twenty five hundred. And the guy's like, oh, I'll do this. And I'm like, all right, I'm gonna do it. And I look at it, I go, I am garbage because I'm like, I don't know the difference <laughs> between this. For this. Yeah, I go, I don't know the difference between this and every other TV. I'm the same way. Yeah, I yeah. don't get it. The uh, value of spending an extra three thousand dollars to the five hundred dollar TV. Yeah, yeah, and also it's like, what am I watching? I'm not fucking. You know what I mean? Like I watch, I watch junk. Like I watch fucking reality TV and shit. What do I need to like pixels? You yeah. watch reality TV a lot? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm a big Ninety Day Fiance. <laughs> Hit me, dude. Oh my god, are you watching the ones that are on right now on HBO he's like Max? The Sphinx, man. On he can't it, get I, I know. It's like he's like, oh, I have my own sea salt pepper grinder. <laughs> yeah. like, I love. Pitbull, pitbulls and paroles. Um, uh, what one's on now? Not on H. I don't know. I watch it on my. It's on demand. So there's. Uh, They've gotten crazy because now there's like shows within shows. There's the watch alongs. There's women on their second or third. It's definitely too many. You, do you know the one that's on now is one of them is is with the guy with the hat who won't take it off and he's with the smoking hot Spanish chick and you're like what the hell are these two doing together? The one I'm watching now, I think there's a deaf couple. Okay. And then the guy, yeah, that, yeah, the, yeah. like the 18-year-old that moves to Thailand or something and has to ride on the back of a yak. It's a, awesome. Or, it's, it's the best. Wild. And so she, so he w- would wear the hat and he's like, Jasmine thinks, that, you know that guy? Yeah, he yeah, talks yeah, about yeah, Jasmine yeah. all yeah. the time. And she's like, I want you to put me in the nicest place yes. here. Those two, I could watch them. It's fast. <laughs> it's a human experiment. It's so fascinating. I could watch them. To, if, if they were on live stream 24-7, I wouldn't be here right now. <laughs> I would never leave my place. They're the most interesting interesting couple i've ever they go from mortal enemies at three o'clock to four o'clock he's proposing for the fifth time Mm -hmm. it's it's unreal it's proper unhinged people love and you know what i like about it it makes me feel the comfort of the insanity i grew up with without actually having to be like i have control of it i could turn it on and i could turn it off wow i can see that's there he goes again that's so I, smart. That's deep. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Crazy. I can stop my life. Yeah, yeah. It's like, you motherfucker, fuck you, you piece of shit. And I could be like, that, that's, you clo- that's you closing and locking your bedroom door right <laughs> yeah, there. Yeah, 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 yeah. There you go. No, thank you, mom. <laughs> yeah. What are you sleeping in? Uh, So I have the, this is again, you're right. This is a, I have these, uh, 
shorts. They're like it's either um, jeans or five thousand dollar pajamas. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. They're. <laughs> Am I taking my sneakers on or uh, I I sleep in these like, what is it called? Bamboo shorts. But they're only like 20 bucks or whatever on Amazon. I have like 30 pair and they're the gift. They're breathable? Amazing. They're the gift I give to everyone when it's like a time to give a gift and I give it to them. And they're they're always like, they're the only thing I sleep in. Huh. And it's one, like, I don't know if you know the- Do you do underwear on them or just the shorts? Just the shorts. And so, you know- uh, Writing that down. Yeah. uh, We're all going to be sleeping on them next They're amazing. So, you know the Pajitsky effect, which is uh, Christina P. She has things called the Pajitsky effect where it's like, uh, uh, you know, sh- her and Tom used the same phone charger for like eight years, even when they were like doing very well. And yeah, then one we, day, to, we were going through the same thing. Yeah. Right, and then one day they're like, oh, we can buy three phone chargers. It's like you don't realize the things you've held so you're like, oh, a phone charger. And then you're like, OK, well, they're now nine bucks. We can afford a thousand. Right. Phone so yeah. with those shorts, I'm like, I used to be like, oh, man, my shorts are in the laundry. This and, and then one day on fucking Amazon, I saw like the counter thing where you could buy it. And I'm like, you could drag this all the way to 30. Yeah. And now I just have 30 fucking <laughs> pair of them. And it's never not there's never not a clean one. It's, it's a life changer. You sleep with your socks on? Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Do I sleep with my socks on? Are you fucking Lou? Who sleeps with their socks on in here? Anybody? No. Dude, that's insane. Psychopath. I'd ra- I'd literally, it's the same thing to me as sleeping in like a fucking uh, a North Face jacket. <laughs> yeah, no. I sleep with their socks on is a lunatic move. That's the first time you've challenged, that any guest has challenged the whole room. Like, who in here does oh, that? Yeah. I'll, I'll fight all of you. Yeah. Uh, do you have a go-to karaoke song? Uh, you know, again, with fucking Tom and Christina, I never, I was a no karaoke guy. And then at Christina P's birthday, uh, they had karaoke and, you know, I felt like a loser for not doing it because it was like people were doing it. And it was also like, they had like little rooms, so it wasn't like everybody. So, um, what'd you do? I did, uh, Bon Jovi. Uh, Living I did, on a prayer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Slipknot, wait and bleed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, <laughs> I'm like, everybody ready? Happy birthday, Christina. So it's for you. Uh, Open the pit up. <laughs> yeah. I respect it. And then after that, I did um, Forgot About Dre. I did Eminem's part. And Rap my friend and did, uh, yeah, my boy Kasim did uh, the uh, Dre part. I, I think, see, I think rapping's easy because it was just like talking. I didn't have to, re- you know <laughs> what I mean? You don't got to be on it. And I knew that. Enough. I knew I knew Eminem's yeah. fucking part down. Well, you dance at a wedding. Uh, it depends. If it hits me, I, when I was drinking, I would dance. <laughs> I was, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, now it has to really hit me. You know, like at at Jamie's wedding, she had the right kind of like they had, she had a band and they were doing like kind of '90s music and this and it. You know, and she wanted people dance. Like I would be outside, like fucking. You know, I forget if I was smoking still at the time, but like trying to smoke or whatever. And they, and they had people coming and be like, Jamie wants everyone inside. Ah, uh, gotcha. Like, so like you know, sometimes it hits me, and then there's other times where it's like, get the fuck out of here! Like I'm I'm not dancing to this yeah. shit. No. You drinking coffee? Any coffee? I do zero caffeine. Zero caffeine. Zero caffeine of any kind. I drink. So again, I used to do fucking Molly Coke ketamine <laughs> for days straight, and I was fine. If I drink one coffee, um, flying. It's it. Le- and Dr. Drew is actually talking to me about this, but he's like, people have different ways of digesting it. Where like some people it's gone in forty five minutes and other people it's like days. Yeah, and that's what happens with me. Like I drink fucking you know coffee and I'm buzzing. Okay, mm-hmm. I mean, um, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it can go either way. Do you I, get cash back when you make a purchase? Will you take? Will you get money? No. I never have. I I don't even know. Do you have any? Credit- I try and get out of there as fast as possible. Yeah. Do you have any credit cards now? Do you? you, you yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, eventually, though. I got one. Okay. Yeah. Amex, I only have one. One credit card. One credit card. Amex Visa. What are you using? Oh. You don't know. No. That's crazy. Uh, listen, because of my fucking manager, it's never not worked. <laughs> you know, he just I just got it in my pocket, and whenever I need to buy something, I just. Uh, let me see what we got here. New York yeah. kid always had the with ID. Those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Whoa, whoa. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, we'll blur it. We'll blur it's it. a Visa. No, no, no. It's a MasterCard. All right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, Not yeah. bad. Not a MasterCard. Who's cutting the hair? Uh, so, also, wait. No wallet. Just loose cards in his pocket. No wallet. Ever. No. No wallet. Because if I lose the on? wallet, I lose everything. If I lose one card, I lose one card. <laughs> the uh, What was the question before? What did you say? The haircut. Hair, so the one before this one, I did. 
And then, and then the, the right, this, this gets fucking trash. Yeah. I don't know what we're doing. Cut your own hair. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just I have you know I used to have a thing where I'd grow out my hair for like you, you see on Sopranos so I have long yeah. hair and then it's short and then long. So I would just grow out my hair because I hated going to get a haircut and I was partying so much. And then one day I would just shave it into the toilet. And I just fucking shave my head and then it was. He's in jail. Yeah. Yeah, I cutting just, your I hair to, cutting your hair in an apartment with no furniture, you're trash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I, was like, I was like, I was on the lamb when I cut my hair. That, but, but yeah, his beard and shit. It was just getting like a little too long, where it would be in my fucking face, and I'm like, well, I don't need this, and I just fucking combed it down, and I just fucking chop, chop, chop here. I didn't do, I didn't do the sides or the back, but I just got the front out of the way. Who cut the last one? Did you go to a place? I Get went it? to like a legit place. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Before I came here, before I came to New York, I was like, all right, I wanna, because you know what it was, I hadn't done my hair. In like a year, and my uh, goddaughter, or my my uh, sorry, my niece was getting baptized. So I'm like, I'm gonna have to fucking do my hair for the first time. And I'm like, what does that even look like right now? Because it had been since my friend's wedding over a year ago. And uh, so I, it does, it doesn't have his hair in a year. Yeah, yeah, I'm just a hat guy. I'm just a big hat guy, or like this. Like I just got out of the shower, and I was like, "Yeah, fuck it looks it. pretty good though." Like, he lives on. He Thanks. lives on his own terms, man. I, I tell you, I respect the shit out of it. Mm-hmm. It's fucking awesome. That's what happens when you get the kid a lock for his door. Yeah, he's on his own. He makes his, his, his own fucking. That's possibilities it. Possibilities are endless. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I'll do my hair. Maybe I won't do my hair. <laughs> yeah. Do you own any suits? You have suits at the house? Yeah. Here you. This is gonna fucking blow your mind. I got a custom tux for my friend's wedding. I got with my fucking name in the jacket. A custom go. tux. I got a custom. It was only like six hundred bucks. It was one of these places over here. But yeah, I got. I got a custom. Well, less than the uh, sushi. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you want a tux or some sushi? I got a. Uh, yes, yeah, so I had a custom, and then I have like one or two. But you want to hear trash. So when, that time when I we've heard it already. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just, just for the uh, just so we know. Uh, I w- when I went to that Vegas for the fucking two weeks and I stayed for a year and a half, I came back and shortly after coming back was one of my friend's weddings. So I'm like, okay, no problem. Like, I, you know, I'll see you there. I put the tux on and I hadn't put that tux on in, I don't know, three, four years. And it was huge. I'm walking and there's no belt loop in a tux. I'm walking around my, cause, and I put the tux on 30 minutes before the wedding. Like you before I got in the Uber, I'm check, like, oh my yeah. God, I'm walking around his wedding for three hours holding <laughs> my fucking pants up. And then Don't one, dancing that night. And one of the fucking groomsmen finally goes, hey, we have suspenders on under the, do you want this? And I put the suspenders on. It was like the greatest yeah, fucking. Lifesaver. Yeah, lifesaver. Yeah, I was like, there. oh yeah, my God, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like a guy from the Depression. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Holy shit. Ladies and gentlemen, the podcast is not today, pal. At YMH Studios, Mr. Robert Eiler, buddy. Yeah, thanks. Fucking fantastic. Thank you for having me. Absolutely fucking fantastic. Anything you want the folks out there to know you want to hit them with? No, yeah. When you guys are in Austin, come by, man. Oh, of course. Happy to do it, it, dude. Come hang. What a tale. What an episode. pal. We're all over the, you know, anywhere you find your stuff, whatever they say. I'm not, I'm not, I don't know. Tom is the business guy. He's spending fucking 52,000 on dinner. I'm just here to fucking have a good time, you know? Don't tell him he told you that. Yeah. <laughs> it was 5200 <laughs> Kibby, what do you got for me? Uh, guys, we're all over the road uh, Like we said, added shows in Philly That's more than halfway sold out Get those tickets, that's gonna go for sure Get those tickets uh, Fourth show out in Chicago, get those fucking tickets Third show out in Toronto, get those fucking tickets Everything else is almost sold out We fucking love you. thank you so much Robert, we love you buddy, thank yeah, you man. for coming yeah, thank in Thank you for it. having me, man, it was great, it was fun Gang, we love you too, and we'll see you next week Peace, Peace.